Hi, welcome to my Lou Tube. I'm Lou and I have been out of hospital for a full week now and I'm going to talk you through my recovery from a dislocated and broken hip that I did nearly two weeks ago walking across a wet floor. Not bike related and actually I'm really glad it wasn't bike related because I would hate to have negative feelings towards my bike um, or be scared about getting back on uh, in three months time when I'm allowed. But yes, I have very negative feelings towards my cowboy boots um, and wet floors terrify me now, but um, yeah, I'm doing okay. The worst part of each day is 6 p.m. Um, for my daily injections of um, it's like blood thinning stuff to stop me from getting clots. I think it's because I'm doing basically nothing. And I was in bed in hospital for like three or four days, completely horizontal, um, before they moved me and got me up on crutches and stuff. But yeah, so I have to have blood thinning um, injections every day. I When they told me I need to do that, I just started crying. I was just like, no, nope, not doing it. Can't do that because they are actually really painful. Uh, it's quite a big needle and it goes, they, they need it somewhere uh, fleshy. So it goes in my tummy and I just couldn't do it for myself. But thankfully Rob stepped up and was like, I'll do it. Um, he isn't actually enjoying it. He apologises constantly when he's doing it. Um, and the worst was one day when I don't know why it hit somewhere different and just hurt even more. I actually moved and flinch was like ow he pulled it out and then of course had to re-stab me um so that was the worst uh, but most days um have been it's been okay it stings after but it, yeah it's not the funnest but he's an absolute gem he's brought a bed downstairs um to ground floor so i'm on my bed now where i basically just spend all day and night um turns out he can cook smoke alarm's only gone off once He's just being an absolute gem. I've got a bell, actually, I'll see if it works. But uh, we've got these um, like cowbells for bike things, but which I ring if I need assistance. So um... I think it worked. Did you need something? I was just testing it. It worked. Of course it worked. Thank you. You're I actually welcome. don't need anything. <laughs> mm. I love you. Goodbye. So he. <laughs> He's a gem. I'm so lucky. Very, very lucky. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. So uh, yeah, since I got out of hospital, just reliving some of the craziness of it. Like I've been dwelling over the accident, uh, replaying it in my head quite a lot. Um, the pain, uh, how it happened, all that stuff. Basically, I was just walking across a wet floor. My left foot went first and in trying to stay upright, I wrenched my right leg forward and basically pulled my hip out of the socket and broke, like snapped some of the front of the socket off in the process. Uh, so all of that, I think, happened before I even went down. I didn't even really have a massive like fall or impact or anything because I had a, like a tasting glass in my um, pocket to use later and it didn't even smash and it was on that side. So I know I didn't slam down um, hard or anything like that. I literally was trying to recover my footing and bust myself but yeah I was on the floor for two hours before the ambulance got there which really sucked that was just awful and I knew that I'd done something I couldn't move I could feel a lump on the front which I now know was the freaking hip joint out the front of my uh, of the socket thankfully it wasn't through the skin but it was just so painful but I was able to talk I would spoke to the ambulance dispatcher and like explained what happened and how I was feeling and I just I wasn't freaking out I I was in massive amounts of pain more pain than I've ever been before and I've had two children uh, without pain relief so this was next level bonkers uh, but I was able to talk to the ambulance dispatcher so I think they just thought that maybe I'd fallen over and just bruised myself or whatever so I wasn't priority but oh my god that was the worst um, and then the other thing that was really really freaking crazy and traumatic was just hearing the doctors talk about how they were going to get my hip back in again, the manipulation of what they had to do. I'm just so glad that I was out before that happened. So they were going to sedate me, not put me fully to sleep, but sedate me. And luckily, I I don't remember anything after them um, cutting my trousers off, like partway up the second leg of them cutting. I just... I was just gone. So I'm really glad because they were talking about, you know, one of them being on top of me and having to wrench my leg up and pull it out. I was just like, oh my gosh, I just... So 
those are the two worst bits that I keep kind of thinking about and stuff. But overall, I'm just so glad that Rob was with me, that we got to hospital, that I was home uh, in UK, um, rather than being away somewhere and just not understanding like local language or, you know, what to do in an emergency and being stuck somewhere. So it could have been a lot worse. Anyway, um, the hospital was amazing. Um, everyone is completely overrun, but doing their best. Uh, but it, it was just bonkers. There was like, it was just stuff was kind of surreal. Like on my final night there, I thought that this was part of a dream that some guy had tried to get in my bed. There was an old guy when I looked up, was just like milling around at the end of my bed trying to get in. I thought I'd dreamt it, but the next day, my uh, ward buddies were like, hey, what about that man last night? What was going on there? I was just like, oh my God, I thought that was a dream. He was just completely disorientated, obviously gone to the loo and gone back into the wrong ward. But uh, so that was crazy. Luckily, the nurse had heard some sort of a kerfuffle, uh, grabbed him and, and took him away before he got in bed with me. <clears throat> so that was fun. And then there was this dude that just walked past at like 10 to 4 every day wearing the same thing. It wasn't It wasn't like a, a hospital outfit, it was some clothes, like comfy clothes, but he was wearing the same thing at 10 to 4 every day, just kind of shuffled past. So I think he might have been some sort of NPC. Um, and he was just, I never really saw him go back the other way, which was super weird. But uh, so I kind of missed that guy, that was weird. Um, and then my ward buddies, we were, we, we were actually planning <laughs> some sort of revolution, um, a revolt against <laughs> At the hospital if we didn't get out but uh, thankfully we didn't have to do that we were we were pretty revolting as it was but we didn't need to actually stage a revolution we all have been let out since I'm in contact with a few of them still and they're they're doing okay thankfully but uh, yeah so I got home and uh, I've been sent so many lovely things um I got uh, a load of prezzies I got a card from my brother hmm. rude but a nice mug came with it, so I'll forgive him. My sister sent me a colouring book. I've always actually wanted to do some of these, you know, colouring things, but never, ever made time. So uh, at some point I will do it. She sent me some nice colouring pencils too. Um, I've got a whole box of Lush stuff from um, Sun God. Nice candle and uh, relaxy things. Then I got a whole box from um, a friend of mine called Ian, who used to be the manager of Bicycle, the bike shop that have always been wonderful to me. He sent me some yummy chocolate stuff, some books to read. He also sent me some newspapers, which he'd saved from the summer. So this is from the Times. Um, when I was in it. And it just made me pretty emotional because firstly that he'd saved it and that was really sweet to send it to me. Um, but I just felt like, oh my gosh, I can't even walk. I'm now like off my bike for absolutely ages and look at who I used to be. But it just, yeah, it was emotional. So there I am. That was so cool. But just really sweet and thoughtful. So thank you. And then Katie Cookaburra. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> look what she did. those boots get well soon so sweet and a whole box of absolute essentials that because we spent a bit of time together this summer she knows me really well so um she knows what i have for breakfast which definitely these days goodness me <laughs> two oh my gosh just made me laugh so much all the stuff she's put in just so sweet love hearts other sweeties just just so so sweet and thoughtful and lovely and i've had so many messages and just people phoning and so thank you. It's just really, really sweet that people are thinking of me and people reaching out that I don't even know, just saying they've been in similar situations and know what I'm going through and that, you know, it'll get better and stuff like that. So yeah. Oh, um, Rhianne and Jules, my uh, teammates cycled over at the weekend and we went just around the corner and got some brunch, which is lovely. So I'm getting pretty handy on my crutches. I got some pink ones, of course I did. 
Uh, my hands hurt if I have to do any more than a minute or so. I think I'll get strong. It's actually really interesting to see. So in UK, and I think mostly everywhere apart from America, we use these kind of crutches, whereas in America they use like the underarm ones. Um, it's just strange to have seen like, you know, the differences in the in the, the two types of crutches that get used and the comments that a few of my American friends have made about these crutches that they associate these with being absolutely ancient and terrible to use and we think the absolute opposite of the armchair armchair armpit <laughs> armpit crutches lucy one of my other teammates sent me absolutely tons of sweets which me the boys and rob are tucking into constantly <laughs> I will not be travelling to Turkey this weekend. I was due to fly on Friday to um, Grand Fondo World Championships qualifier. Um, and I was, I've been, you know, training really hard for it. I was really looking forward to it, hoping to bag qualification for next year's World Championships that are in Glasgow. Obviously not going. I booked flights with EasyJet, which uh, wasn't by choice. It was the um, airline flying to where the race is. And um, yeah, I don't have what's classed as a serious medical condition to stop me from flying. So I can do absolutely nothing about um, getting the money back for those flights. So, um, cause I'm, I haven't had surgery or anything like that. So I'm fit to fly, uh, I, but I'm not going obviously. So I'm going to um, see if I can change the flights to a different place, location. I want to take Rob somewhere uh, for everything he's doing for me, looking after me. He's an absolute saint. So I um, think we will go to Prague, um, lots of beer there. Uh, probably January, February or something. Um, but we do have a trip planned for next week um, for Thanksgiving uh, to go to America, which I think we're still going to go. Um, I'm going to see how I go for the next couple of days, but I'm OK on crutches. Uh, as I said, I'm fit to fly. So as long as I don't be, you know, a dickhead and take it easy over there, um, I should be OK. I was meant to be meeting up with Francis and Justin which I still want to meet them. They're going to be in Texas next week as well. So I'd love to see them, but I obviously can't ride with them. So that's the plan for next week. So we'll see how that goes. But for now, it's just very much taking each day as it comes, staying on top of pain. It's more of a dull ache type pain than the freaking awful pain that I was in a couple of weeks ago. I'm just taking ibuprofen and paracetamol now not on codeine stopped morphine before i even less left hospital so yeah managing the pain much better struggling to sleep at night sometimes i just can't get comfortable but it could be a lot worse so i'm doing okay thank you all for the lovely messages i think i'm going to wrap this up now so yeah i just wanted to fill you in on basically i'm okay i'm doing all right um i appreciate the messages and oh, francis has just texted me Yes, they're in New Orleans at the moment and I'm hoping to see them next week. I will keep you posted. Um, I will probably do another video before next week. Let me know if there's anything you want me to cover and talk you through crutches. I, in my last video when I was still in hospital, I had the bit where they showed me how to go up and down stairs. I don't know if that's handy for anyone uh, who needs to use crutches sometime, but I will talk to you all soon. Please comment, please like, please subscribe. Um, I really appreciate it and I will see you all soon.